Good evening. My name is Scott Hicko, and thank you for joining me uh, in this video. Today, the question is, do you worship the fake Jesus or the real Jesus? And the information is coming from the book of Hebrews in the New Testament of Scripture. The book of Hebrews says that Jesus Christ came and tasted death for the sake of everyone. That's the real Jesus. And my question is, do you believe in that Jesus or do you believe in the fake Jesus that came and died but didn't really taste death for everyone? He only potentially tasted it for them if they do something on their end to achieve his death. That's the fake Jesus. The real Jesus tasted death for everyone. So if you actually, as scripture says, that Jesus tasted death for everyone, then how are there people that are not redeemed and saved by the blood of Jesus Christ? If he tasted death for them, meaning he went through death for them, how can that not apply to them? How can what Jesus Christ did not apply to them if he already tasted it for them? If it doesn't apply to them, then you can't say that Jesus Christ tasted it for them. Because if people are going to remain dead forever, or they're going to go to some fictitious eternal torture chamber, which is a fable of religion, then Jesus didn't taste death for that person. That person's dead and being tortured. Best case scenario, they're annihilated and away from God forever. But either way, Jesus did not taste death for a person who is experiencing death. He tastes death for everyone, meaning he takes the cause of death, which is sin, away. So he takes sin and death away from everyone because he tastes it for everyone. If we look at Hebrews chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, it says, For in subjugation of all to him, he leaves nothing unsubject to him. Yet now we are not as yet seeing all subject to him. Obviously, many demons, Satan, um, entities, principalities, powers, human beings are not subject to Jesus Christ right now. But let's see what happens in the fullness of time. So yet now we are not seeing all subject to him. Yet we are observing Jesus, who has been made some bit inferior to messengers, angels, because of the suffering of death wreathed with glory and honor so Jesus Christ was made low by coming here and tasting death for us so that in the grace of God he this is Jesus should be tasting death for the sake of everyone so Jesus Christ came was made low died and tasted death for everyone but let me go back to verse 8 there it says, For in the subjugation of all to him, he leaves nothing unsubject to him. This is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is going to have nothing that's unsubject to him. Everything will be subject. Everything will come under the feet of Jesus Christ in the fullness of time. Yet now we are not seeing all subject to him. Of course not. There's many people that are in disbelief. Many people that reject Jesus Christ. Of course but this scripture says, for in the subjugation of all to him, meaning that all will eventually be subject to him, he leaves nothing unsubject to him. So all in the fullness of time will be subject to Jesus Christ. So how can anyone that's subject, that's underneath Jesus Christ, be separated from him forever in eternity in hell or annihilated? This scripture proves beyond the shadow of a doubt that everything, Nothing is unsubject to Jesus Christ. So if it's subject to Jesus Christ, if it's under his authority, under his rule, under his feet, it cannot be somewhere else separate from Jesus with Satan in hell or annihilated and dead because that would be unsubject to Jesus. But everything is going to be subject to Jesus. And there's parallel verses in First. 
Corinthians chapter 15, verses 22 through 28. Also in Ephesians, the end of chapter 1, verses 20 to 23, is the same thing. It talks about how everything in the fullness of time will be subject to Jesus Christ. So how if they're subject to Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ tastes death for everyone, can they be off somewhere else in hell or dead and not subject to Christ? This scripture proves that all will be under Christ. And eventually, as 1 Corinthians 15, 28 says, after Jesus perfects everyone, he gives up his reign so that God will be all in all. Again, in the uh, last four scriptures of Ephesians chapter 1 says the same thing. And Hebrews uh, chapter 2, 8 through 10 says the same thing. Look at these scriptures. It leaves no room for the fake Jesus that leaves part of his creation or most of his creation apart from him in eternal hell or apart from him in some sort of eternal death or annihilationism. If we continue to look in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26, it says, By year by the blood of others, since then he must often be suffering from the disruption of the world, yet now once at the conclusion of the eons for the re repudiation of sin through his sacrifice is he manifest. It means he got rid of sin forever. I like actually other versions. I use the concordant um, version. Uh, because it is a direct translation, and it gets rid of a lot of the translation errors in Scripture, because it's a direct translation from the Greek. Um, but here, if you look at other uh, versions of the Bible, I think it says it in a more understandable way. So if you look at the New International Version, But he has appeared once and for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. New Living Translation. But now, once for all time, he has appeared at the end of the age to remove sin by his own death as a sacrifice. He has appeared, English Standard Version, once and for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Uh, everyone's favorite, the New King James or the King James Bible. Now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. The new King, King James Version. He has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So my question is, and this is really part two to this video. Did he put, did Jesus Christ put away sin with his sacrifice? Or did he only potentially put away sin by his sacrifice? Scripture says that Jesus Christ came and he put away sin through his sacrifice and that he tasted death for everyone. That's the real Jesus. Do you believe that or do you believe the fake Jesus of religion? That he came to put away sin but it's only an offer. And if the human being does what they're supposed to do, then and only then did Jesus put sin away from them. So it's not really that Jesus came to put sin away. He came to make an offer and it's ultimately up to the human beings to make the realization or the decision as to whether that sin was actually put away. Because if the sin is still in a person and they're in hell or they're dead for all eternity, then that sin was not taken away. So that proves that the fake Jesus leaves it up to the sinner to determine whether sin is taken away. He didn't actually do it. But the real Jesus of Scripture says that he put away sin. He took away sin. And all eventually will be subject to him because of what he, Jesus Christ, did. He is the action. He is the fact. He puts away sin. He tastes death for everyone. And in the fullness of time even though not all are subject to him right now, based on God's choice and who he gives to believe and when, who he gives belief to and when, and as people move through judgment and go through whatever process was predetermined for them to go to and go through, God will eventually make all subject to Jesus Christ until Jesus Christ gives up his reign and God will be all in all, as scripture declares. So the truth is, is that Jesus did taste death for everyone. He did come here 
to put away sin. And in the fullness of time, that's exactly what he does. That's the real Jesus. Please stop believing in the fake Jesus that only makes that an offer contingent upon how the human reacts. Because that offer and that contingent upon the human's response means that he didn't actually do those things. It's up to the human to determine whether he did those things. And he didn't really do it unless they respond a certain way. So it takes salvation off Jesus and puts it on the human. Give up on that fake Jesus and just rest in the real Jesus that he tasted death for you, for your loved ones, for all humanity. And that we will all be with God and be all in all because of the death, entombment, and resurrection of Jesus Christ.